Hello, I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Statue goes up, statue comes down. Why was this golden Erdogan removed from a German square? And let's put some on and see what happens. We'll show you the ugly side of the beauty vlogger business. An underwater village in Turkey looks for UN status. And she needed a new heart. We've got an update on Sophia, whose Kiki Challenge summoned Drake. Now, top of our news feed, a statue of President Erdogan was put up in the German city of Weisbaden, and it was taken down after just a day. The German police say that was because security of it can no longer be guaranteed. So what happened and why was it put up in the first place? in Ordnung, Erdogan als eine kontroverse Figur zu begreifen und über die man hier in diesem freien Land sehr wohl diskutieren darf. Dass man das in anderen Ländern nicht darf, ist sehr bedauernswürdig. Hier in diesem Land kann man über diese Statue und auch über diesen Mann diskutieren. Meine Meinung ist nicht in Ordnung. Für mich ist das keine Kunst, das ist eine Provokation und das spaltet nur das gute Verhältnis zwischen den Türken und den Deutschen. Was passiert im deutsch-türkischen Erdogan ist ein guter Präsident. Right, let's have a look at some other things that caught our eye on social media. Now Donald Trump has to unblock a bunch of people he blocked on Twitter. The president's favorite site was allowing people to say unfavorable things by adding him. And he didn't like it, so he used the block feature to put his fingers in his ears. But a judge has ruled the president's account is a public forum and blocking people violates their freedom of speech. Vault, the US Open has it's got itself caught up in the policing of women's bodies issue after the French Open and Serena and Bodysuit Gate. More on the greatest of all time in a minute. This one is about Elise Cornette changing her shirt while on court. Now her shirt was the wrong way around, so she reversed it, as you can see, and was warned by the umpire. There's nothing in the rules that say women can't change on court. The US Open has had to say sorry. And now on to Serena. At the beginning of the week, the French Open says she couldn't wear her bodysuit in next year's tournament. So some were speculating what she would wear for the US. As you can see, she went for the tutu. Game, set and fash. All right, let's take you to Hong Kong now and bring you a story of manipulation, marriage and social media. Here's Joel. And most of the reaction here in Hong Kong has been uh, of little surprise. Scams like this are not uncommon, uh, although this one in particular seems to have been fairly unique. Uh, that is, of course, uh, you know, assuming the victim is telling the truth in this instance. Now, this 21-year-old woman says that she had initially applied for a makeup course in May via Facebook, um, but was ultimately encouraged to change that to a wedding planning course. Now, and, and part of 
As part of that training, she was then told she had to go to the mainland uh, and be part of what she said she thought uh, was a mocked up ceremony. Now, in the course of that, all she uh, signed, ended up signing uh, what turned out to appear to be a, a genuine marriage certificate. Uh, and then she came back to Hong Kong and seems to have uh, realized what happened. Um, she turned to police. They said in Hong Kong they couldn't really do anything uh, without proof of a crime. And um, it seems that she's sort of tried to go to uh, some human rights charities as a result instead. Now, we don't know what's happened in this situation. We should be clear. These are based on accusations. And we don't know also um, what's happened in all this to uh, the alleged husband. His motive in marrying a Hong Konger, uh, some have speculated, may have been to get a visa. Others are suggesting the marriage documents uh, may have been sold off afterwards. And identity theft scams uh, like this, particularly around love, uh, do ha happen, I don't want to say all the time, but increasingly often, uh, and normally, of course, in involving uh, the sending of money uh, to strangers. Uh, official figures um, have showed police received uh, 235 cases um, involving online romance, romance scams uh, in 2017. Now, have you ever wondered how to do the perfect brow or get your contouring on point? Me neither. But if you do, you'll know you have to go to YouTube and find a beauty vlogger that you like. And these vloggers make a bunch and are genuine influencers. So when some of them were exposed as racist, well, you can imagine the reaction. In today's video, I have my best friends. We have yeah. Gabby, Manny, Laura, all of my friends. Literally. These are some of the world's biggest beauty vloggers. They record videos like this. With my new Tipa Tutti palette. So cute this and this. I'm ready in the Rolls Royce in the back of a car while Nate was driving. This is a whole new level of extra. Once upon a time, they were a tight knit community. Not anymore. We don't really know how the fallout started, but we do know where it's ended. A racism scandal. This is Jeffree Star, one of the world's most influential vloggers. He's so rich, he can cut a Chanel handbag in half without a second thought. Oh, oh my God. After he fell out with his beauty vlogger friends, they took to social media to remind their followers of some of the now deleted racist comments Star made in the past. But that backfired. Turns out they'd also said some pretty racist stuff. And Star's fans were only too happy to post those comments in his defense. Laura Lee, a vlogger from Alabama, faced the biggest backlash, leading to this teary apology video. She lost half a million followers in just over a week. According to Trends, that's about $65,000 a year of lost earnings. Beauty tubers like Jeffree Star and Laura Lee are really influential. They have 14.6 million subscribers between them, and they've disrupted the industry. Where people used to look to magazines to find out what makeup to buy, now they head to YouTube. Beauty vlogging is built on the cult of the personality and perceived authenticity. This could be why Laura Lee's apology doesn't seem to have been accepted by followers. In the video, she says this. I, six years ago, decided to retweet things that were so vile and hurtful. Actually, she didn't retweet the comments. She wrote them. And ignorant. When Star released his apology video in 2017, his fans were a lot more forgiving. I think that racism is a very serious subject, especially in today's world. I'm embarrassed. Recently, he's become vocal about shaming brands who don't cater to all skin tones. And then the swatches came out. After that video, the brand Tarte added 15 more shades to their collection. YouTubers have the power to pressure an industry to change. But the recent racism scandal shows the problems with the cult of the personality and raises questions about how YouTubers should be held accountable for their past. Well, now to a beautiful lake in the middle of Turkey and beneath the surface of this lake, there's a sunken village that's now trying to get UN protected status.
go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Thursday. Now, Facebook Watch is now available all over the world, so if you need another reason to be on the Facebook app, here it is. It's an attempt to compete with YouTube and Netflix, and it allows advertisers to sell spots around the videos, which will now be available to more than 2 billion people. A hacker has been sentenced to eight months in prison for stealing photos of celebrities that he got into their iCloud accounts. Uh, the actress Jennifer Lawrence was one of them, took her photos and uploaded them to the internet. And a homeless man called Johnny Bobbitt had a GoFundMe page set up for him. It raised $400,000, but the people who set it up, Kate McClure and Mark D'Amico, kept loads of the money and spent some of it on luxury cars and holidays and gambling. Now the homeless man is suing them. The GoFundMe page say they're looking into allegations of misuse of funds. Here's the moment McClure told Bobbitt they got the fund going. So, oh my God. I don't know where it's gonna go. You know, like it, what's it, gonna happen? It's the point behind it. You yeah. know, that's but as of right now, <laughs> as of right now, we have that much. I can't see. Right there. Seventeen hundred. That changes 60, my life right there. Seventeen hundred and sixty-four dollars. That changes my life. The race for Governor of New York got seriously fighty last night as the two candidates for the Democratic nomination, the incumbent Andrew Cuomo and the challenger Cynthia Nixon, had their one and only debate. Here's a flavor of one of the early exchanges. Can you promise the voters of New York right here, right now, tonight, that if you win re-election that you won't run for president and spend the next four years as governor? Yes. Yes. Yes and yes. Double yes. My opponent lives in the world of fiction. I live in the world of fact. The subway system is owned by New York City. The, the subway NTA has system has been controlled by the state since 1965. Can you, can you stop interrupting? Can you stop interrupting? Can you stop lying? Yeah. Uh, as soon as you do. And it was a case of man versus beast in Croatia, or rather, man versus their dog. And an easy win for people, for those on four legs, right? But this was a swimming race. They were competing uh, off the island of Rab, and the race was won by a dog called Bonnie. And his prize was a two day vacation on a campsite on the island. Great! Not. A restaurant in New York City is helping refugees gain access to the jobs market. The U.S. had more than 300,000 new asylum applications last year, double the claims from the two previous years. come here and they're told, you know, you stand on your own two feet. We're here to support you, but this is your journey and your investment in yourself. In all cases, there's a lot of growth that happens, whether it is uh, growth in them as a person, or different aspects of their personality kind of coming out of their shell a little bit. And last up, let's check in with 11-year-old Sofia Sanchez. A reminder, she's the little girl who did this Kiki challenge. <laughs> then this happened. Oh my God! <laughs> and my other wish is to get a heart. Yeah? Which is gonna happen soon. Well, guess what? It happened today. You're getting a heart. Congratulations! I'm getting a heart! Yeah. Well, she's had a heart transplant and doctors say she is now recovering well. I love you. <laughs> well, all of us here at Newsfeed are delighted for her and wish her well. That's your lot. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints and suggestions. I'm at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on Twitter, YouTube and Facebook. Follow, subscribe and add. See you again tomorrow.